Uh, so now we're going to switch to the state of our local communities. Um, and sitting in order from me are Mark Newcomb, the chair of Teton County, Wyoming Board of Commissioners. Uh, Bob McLaurin, the town administrator. Uh, mayor Muldoon is out of town and couldn't make it. Um, Hiram Johnson, the mayor of the city of Driggs, which I'm waiting for this year's extraordinary um, over the top uh, comparison, dear Hiram, as we all are. And finally, Jeff Potter, who's the mayor of Victor. As I mentioned earlier, we had also extended invitations to the mayor of Alpine and the head of the Teton County, Idaho Board of Commission, uh, neither of whom were able to make it. And so uh, each of the speakers will have 10 minutes to reflect upon the state of, I guess in this case, his jurisdiction. And uh, I'll give you guys a couple minute warning um, when, the, when the time is up. Um, but before doing this, I wanted to do uh, one last, uh, one little shout out, and it's not really that little. Um, Bob McLaurin has served this community extraordinarily well for many, many years. And um, at one point, he sort of lost his mind and went to Vail for a few years. Um, and that was really, during the height of his insanity, I went down and visited him there. And we were walking along the main drag, and Bob, you stopped and you picked up a piece of trash. And it was such a small gesture, but here was the town manager of this, this big, important city, just stopping to do the very little things that made it a better city. And that's the kind of care and passion that you brought to this community for decades now, Bob. And you have served us so very well, and we are so very fortunate to have had you as our town manager for so many years. So would you please give it up for Bob McLaurin? kind words. The secret to being a successful city manager or town manager is keeping the people that think you're incompetent away from the ones that are undecided. <laughs> done it for 15 years. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure of my life. First time I followed Mark Newcomb was up the Italian cracks on the Grand Teton. And he was actually guy. And um, it's an honor to follow him now. Uh, I'm standing in for Pete Muldoon, the mayor. Um, and I've been asked to talk, report on the state of the town of Jackson. I will tell you that uh, I'm pleased to report that the, town of, the state of the town of Jackson is pretty strong, I believe, in my judgment. And it's based on um, four reasons at this point in time. First is we have strong revenues. Over Since we came out of the recession, the low point of our revenues was, was 2010. Um, sales tax collections, of, the town sales tax collections have increased from 9.1 million dollars in 2010 to 14 million dollars and estimated in 2018 over the past five years sales tax growth has grown at about seven and a half percent lodging tax revenues we talked about earlier has been an important component of our revenue stream those have been growing very well uh, also uh, in fiscal year 18 we estimate we're going to receive nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars in lodging tax revenue, 690,000 of that will go to support visitor services, as Jim Stanford said, and 230,000 supports general fund. Um, state shared revenues is going down, but it's been offset by strong lodging and sales tax growth. So, the, when, so we have strong revenues. We have healthy fund balances. We're meeting our fund balance targets. Um, total town budget is about $60 million. Uh, including interfund transfers. If you pull the interfund transfers out, it's about $55 million, all funds. Um, the second reason this town is in good shape, I believe, is effective governance. The town is governed by five elected officials, the Jackson Town Council, four, count, four council members and a mayor. <clears throat> and I will tell you that they work well together. While you may agree or disagree about policy directives uh, and the direction that they are taking the town, I will tell you that they are respectful 
thoughtful, and civil. And having been in the middle of shooting wars between elected officials at various times in my career, that is a very important stabilizing component. While they disagree on policy, they are hard on issues and easy on people, as we say. And that's that has served us well. <clears throat> the third reason that we're in good shape is we have a committed staff of employees. We have about, if you count the bus drivers, we have about 135. And they are dedicated and, and uh, serve this community and, are, and take a lot of pride in, um, in serving this community. In April of 2014, when the landslide was running, most of our employees worked 30 days without a day off. And we had 6 a.m. briefings and 6 p.m. briefings, and most of them were there. So we have a committed staff. And then the last point I want to make is <clears throat> the reason we're strong is we continue to reinvest in our infrastructure. We spend, in fiscal year 18, we're budgeted to spend $18 million on streets, roads, water, sewer, and the landslide. We will wrap up the landslide um, in July of this year, hopefully. Uh, we're about two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way to uh, um, <clears throat> Jonathan asked me to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what's the below the radar surface stuff? What, what do you do that people don't know about? And what I, I had a resident of the town of Vale tell me one time, and it really resonated with me, that if you do your job right, nobody notices. You don't think about the town of Jackson when you get up in the morning until your water won't come on. Or you flush the toilet and it doesn't go away. Or you get up in the morning and we, your street hasn't been plowed. Or you call 911 and a police officer won't show up. So a lot of our services, if we do our job right, um, people don't notice. And that's, that's right and appropriate. Um, uh, so... There's a core services. We hear, you hear a lot about, and Mark alluded to it, you know, planning. The rubber meets the road in a resort town in the planning office. But most of the stuff that we do, we, we're like an operating system. We're running in the background. Um, and we, we take a great deal of pride in the core services that we provide for this community. Um, The other thing that we talk about at the town that I take a lot of pride in is, is our organizational culture. We've tried to build a value-centric culture based on the values of respect, integrity, and public service. Um, at, to work at the town of Jackson, you have to have strong technical competence, and you have to be able to uh, manage the human side of the organization. Um, technical competence alone will not let you be successful in our organization and we have moved people out who were technically very very competent but were unable to manage the human side and, re and manage the relationship piece of, of the uh, of that component um, the last thing I mean issues facing the town this is what this conference is about you've heard it over and over again affordable housing Transit, mo uh, transit mobility. Um, the town, when we look at housing, we have a we have a, a two focus, two prong focus on on a housing. One is an employer, and one is to help facilitate uh, community housing. As an employer, we own 18 units. We have a number of units that are master leased. Uh, we began buying uh, housing units about in the late 80s kind of happenstance and serendipitous, but we've continued to buy units and it's helped us recruit and retain uh, top level employees. And then we have an obligation, we believe, to help with community housing, um, and affordable housing or workforce housing, however you care to characterize it. Um, and that I believe that's important because affordable housing, workforce housing, helps build the social infrastructure of this community. I saw what happened in Vail, Colorado. When I got there in 1993, the town of Vail was located in Edwards, Colorado, in Eagle. The, you had 
Uh, it was almost like a barbell. You had very affluent people and very poor people, and not a lot of uh, folks in the middle. And the town of Vail started, we started our affordable housing program in 1993. Um, but by and large, uh, they were gone. And I think this community can be exceedingly proud of the work that we've done all around affordable housing. I don't think we get, give ourselves enough credit at times. This town, this community got started early. We have uh, the Jackson Teton County Housing uh, Department. We have the Housing Trust, and we put a lot of units on the ground. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to speak, and uh, Mayor Muldoon uh, sends his regrets. Um, so thank you very much, Sean. The question was, uh, if are the town and county planning on doing a detailed breakdown of what would happen, how you would cope with the loss of lodging tax revenues were it not in the um, If it doesn't pass, we'll have a $920,000 hole um, in, in our budget, and that will primarily affect the start budget, which is considered in our budget a special revenue fund um, the actual if, the, if it does not pass it's my understanding from discussions with the county treasurer that we'll still have three quarters of revenue so the real impact will not be fiscal year 19 would be fiscal year 20 um, but my expectation there we would likely be cutting expenses the way I've done it in the past is we set targets by department I don't do across the board cuts because I think bigger departments have more room to, to look for savings than a, a three or four person department. Um, but we are anticipating how we would deal with that. But the impact is primarily FY20. Uh, my question's for Bob. I was hoping you could share with everybody a little more detail on the upcoming Snow King visioning process or what exactly it is and I think it's a perfect example of everything we're talking about especially Mark's uh, Awesome points about a rub between economic freedoms and community good Well uh, as you're aware um, the new owners of Snow King they've made significant investments in the in the new lift and some mountain infrastructure there now before uh, the Forest Service in the town asking for a phase two approval and they would in, they envision a gondola to the top some improvements to the top of the mountain there's a the Forest Service has to approve the uh, stuff at the top and the town the private lands are regulated by the Snow King master development plan that was approved I believe <coughs> by the TOJ in uh, 1999 or 2000 um, what we are trying to do is to facilitate a dialogue with the community that shows the, the, the mountain in its totality. So you can kind of, it's sort of one-stop shopping. You can comment on the base area development. You can comment on the mountain improvements. Um, there's going to be, a, I believe it's a 14-member uh, stakeholders group that will be appointed uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's a community meeting Monday night and I think it's here but uh, it's Monday night for sure and it's going to be pretty uh, fast we hope to have this thing done by April uh, of this year um, so that the owners of Snow King can know what general direction they're going in but it is a microcosm of what uh, the chairman talked about earlier and it's uh, Snow King is an icon in town, and uh, it's going to be, we've hired a professional facilitator to help us, and hopefully we can uh, come up with a solution that works for the community and works for the, uh, for the owners of the mountain as well.